Nancy, thank you for being with us today. It's my honor to have you on this channel. Now, I'm sure many of us are aware, but if you could, for our audience, introduce yourself and the current work that you're doing. I am Rosalia Arteaga. I'm former president of the Republic of Ecuador. And now I am leading an NGO, FIDAL Foundation, and we work on educational matters and also environment, peace, and, and other issues here in Ecuador and in some other parts of uh, Latin America. Your Excellency, during your presidency and also your vice presidency, and also in your time as a Minister of Education, what was the most important thing that you felt during your term? I, I had been an educator most of my life, a teacher. Then when I, I was in power, I believe that I continue working on educational matters. I think that I propose a, a very revolutionary change in education, especially in primary education. I work uh, for uh, the technological education. And one of the important things also is to open the road for other women, because I was the first female woman being a um, Minister of Education, Culture and Sports, and also Vice President, President of the Republic. Then open the road for women. I think it's, it was my main legacy for my country. Thank you, Your Excellency. Now, we believe that the work during presidency is very important, but the work that takes place after presidency is equally important. Now, if you could share with us uh, what you have been working on after the term. I try to demonstrate to the people of my country and probably to other countries that you don't need to be in power to do a good job for your country. And that was the thing that I, I, I am most involved with in, in these times in nowadays. Several times I was asked to go back to political field and I refused it uh, precisely to, to, because I feel that I can do my job uh, without the power of, of being an authority. Of course, I am working very hard and I'm very proud of what we are doing uh, during these uh, 25 years that I'm out of the political arena. I had been working on education and environmental issues and peace efforts in terms about empowerment, uh, girls and women, teaching and uh, trying to, to get uh, young people to be leaders. So we have a school for leaders in Ecuador and um, we create a big contest for the teachers and we give prize to, uh, for, uh, it is open for all the teachers of Ibero-America, not only uh, Latin America, but also Spain and Portugal and Andorra that are parts of the Ibero-American community. And, and I had been quite um, active in uh, participating in boards of uh, libraries, of universities and uh, other uh, organizations in several parts of the world. I also had been making mentoring for young people from India or whatever, working all over the world. Thank you, Your Excellency. Now, I want to ask you a little bit about your organization. Could you explain to us the motto and the values that your NGO is carrying? We are talking a lot about the global, um, that is a, a vision, a different kind of vision, but because, of course, we are all global citizens. Now we are connecting by uh, digital platforms and in medicines. We are using vaccines that are produced in other countries. It's a globalized world. But in terms of local, I pretend that the local is the identity of the people. You, you need to have your own values, you need to have your own uh, gastronomy, way to behave, religion, etc. But if you put um, together global and local, uh, building a new world, but not only a new world, but a new concept about global, I think it's uh, uh, the, the way that we can uh, be better human beings. And in this sense, uh, and we put it in our website, uh, to be a glo global citizen is one of the goals of FIDAL Foundation. Thank you, Your Excellency. I think the concept, the term of the global is very interesting. We'll surely come back to that. But for now, I want to hear a little bit about how you encountered this organization, HWPL, and what was your first impression? Well, I, I get uh, to know the organization because I receive an invitation to be part to, of a, for a meeting in Seoul, in Korea. And I, I am very open um, to be in contact with people that uh, share uh, some values like uh, the peaceful efforts uh, for the Korean Peninsula or other places in the world. I think it's a good uh, 
um, initiative to, to get the peace in the world. So Your Excellency, I've heard that you worked with HVPL since 2014, which is quite some time now. In what ways do you think you have worked with HVPL? I, I don't think it's really a work, but I had been sharing some values about uh, especially peace efforts. I had the opportunity to introduce other people to get to know what the uh, HWPL is doing about the culture of peace and, and uh, working with young people to teach the values and also to work on uh, initiatives to modify the law in the parliaments and uh, to to get uh, uh, involved with uh, some schools for uh, teaching peace uh, values. I think that was my uh, b uh, main connectivity with HWPL about education uh, and because it's my uh, my area of work. Thank you, Your Excellency. Now, from your experience with the organization HWPL, what is the most impressive work that you find from them? And also, what are some improvements that you think that they, they need? Well, uh, I think the most remarkable is uh, some efforts that the leader of the organization made in the Philippines and also um, uh, working hard inside Korea to get um, the peace between the two Koreas. It uh, seems to be a dream. And I remember what happens with, the, uh, with Germany uh, after the Second World War. Uh, it, at the beginning, it, it sounds impossible to get uh, the unification of, of Germany because they have two ideologies and two ways to behave. But finally, we have now an, a, a, a unique Germany. And I think it's, it's a good goal to continue working for peace in, in the Korean Peninsula. Now, we heard that you signed an MOA with Memorandum of Agreement with HVPL back in 2019 to teach peace education. Is this correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, uh, several organizations uh, uh, signed um, an MOU about yeah. it. In terms of uh, disseminating the idea, we talk uh, several times about what's the meaning of uh, the peace efforts and how through education we can do it and also um, through the legislation. And, and it has been, uh, I think, our main uh, uh, task during these times. Your Excellency, thank you for the answer. Now, we've informed that you also participated in one of the event of HVPL World Peace Summit in Korea. Now, if you can recall back your memory and share with us how your impression was for the event and if there's anything memorable. I remember that it was a very memorable uh, meeting. We had several speeches. I was one of the uh, leaders that uh, say something during this uh, event. And also, I remember a, a big uh, coliseum or a stadium with uh, tons of people, especially young people, uh, like talking about peace and singing about peace. I think it was uh, very touching uh, to hear all these uh, young people very convinced about the importance of global peace. Your Excellency, now actually we want to go back to one of the comments you made in the previous question about how you said you don't need to be in power to make a change in the world. Now, when we conducted these interviews with numbers of different people, one of the core comments that we received was that the people who are at the positions are the ones who can make a positive change. However, they can still be an obstacle for peace at the same time. Now, we're still living in this world where that can actually happen. The people in the position can be an obstacle for peace. And we also want to hear your opinion on situations like this. Well, it is true and it's a uh, part of the history. Many people in power doesn't do what they have to do, and they are really obstacles. We can remember in history what happens with the Second World War or uh, even other worlds that happens now in the world. And um, it is uh, really a pity to think that the power is used uh, for doing the war or, or also is uh, used to get uh, money, to get only the power, the power for the power, I don't believe on that. And um, I strongly believe in the, the ethics of the politics and the ethics of the people. Uh, if we, we work hard in, on it, 
we don't need to have police to, to take care of what's happening in cities because we will have convinced people that they have to act in a good way. Thank you, Your Excellency. Now, from what you've just said, personally, I feel like we need a leader like you who can make a positive change in our society. Have you ever thought about going back to politics to make a good change in the world? Well, it's a good question. And several times I had been asked about what, why not? I think because when I was very young, I didn't think that the politic will be a field of, of action for me. When I was a young girl, I was thinking that I will be an author, uh, uh, a writer. And uh, I tried to dedicate my time to write uh, books for kids, for young people, for old people also. And I feel that my, my period in, in politics, of course, I think that it was a period of service. But I want also to do other things like writing. And uh, I'm very happy doing that. I, I write some books. Uh, and I try to, to, to put my efforts also on education, not uh, being a politician. Of course, uh, other people can think only being a politic, you can do a politician, you can do that. But uh, no, I, I want to demonstrate that we can do that and we can make a better future for our kids, for our young people. Uh, being a, a good persons, a good leaders of organization, not necessarily in politics. I am happy. I am happy to take this option. Thank you, Your Excellency. I can truly sense your passion to make a change for the future generations. Now, as a global leader, what needs to be kept in mind while maintaining global peace, but also thinking about the need of the people, your own people of the country? I think uh, there are two issues, respect and tolerance. Why I say that? Because you have to respect the others. Because not everybody is going to think like you are thinking. You have to respect other cultures. That's the meaning of local, I think, local. Uh, to respect the others, to, to be proud of your values, your attitudes, your way to behave, but also respect the others. Thank you, Your Excellency. Now, the term that you refer to is a glocal, right? I do agree that we are more and more connected, especially today with advancement of technology. We're definitely um, globally all connected. However, at the same time, when it is at its worst, we can face polarization of the society, which can rise in conflict and cause more problems and division even. Now, what do you think about this kind of situation? Uh, there are some reasons. One is because we don't respect the others in the way that they behave. And of course, um, the other thing is about ethics, about values. If you don't uh, think that the, one of the big goals in life is to live in peace, and you think only in your money or to get uh, more richness and things like that, you are not behaving in a better way for having a, a better understanding between, between people and between nations. Of course, we are global citizens, but we have our identities and we have to respect the other's identities. Now, Your Excellency, if you see HWPL's work within the framework of GLOCAL, do you think HWPL is doing a good job carrying out its ideal? Yes, of course, I think so, because uh, uh, HWPL is thinking about global peace and also I think it's respecting the other's uh, um, activities, the other religions, the other uh, behaviors of, of the people, then it's, it's good to, to think about it and at the same time to work for a global um, goal like peace. Now, Your Excellency, as a first female who carried out many different positions, important positions in your country, I want to ask you this question. Now, HWPL also emphasizes a lot on importance of empowerment of women. Now, how do you think about this when it comes to achieving for peace? I am a great defender of uh, women uh, participation in anything in society, in government, in politics, in academy, in uh, society in general. And of course, I think that any initiative that take uh, the option of working together, men and women, it will be very successful because if you leave behind a woman, you are losing half of humanity. Don't forget that. Yes, I very much agree with you with your last comment. Now, we're already at our last question. Now, amongst our audience and the viewers, there would be people who do not believe in peace, 
in realization and also who would be frustrated because it's not so quickly achieved. Now, do you have any messages that you want to deliver to all of these people? Well, I would say that um, we have to act in the way that we don't uh, uh, hurt the others. And uh, the best way to do it is to think in, in what the others think. One of the big issues in the countries are the asymmetries, people that have a lot and people that doesn't have anything. I think everybody, we want to have good health, good food, good education, uh, good um, style of life then we have to work together. It's a necessity if we can, we want to maintain even the planet Earth because if we don't act together, we are not going to have a planet Earth anymore. Thank you, Your Excellency. I mean, today was a very pleasant interview for me and also your last message saying that we should not leave anyone behind, whether they believe or not believe in achieving for peace. It was really touching for me. Thank you once again for coming here and being with us. Once again, have a good day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you.